Hi guys, Jen Gamuka. After reading the article uh, by Leah Millo uh, that looked at how Betsy Ross became famous, I decided to focus on the question that she posed that if we were going to replace Betsy Ross, who would we replace her with? And I want to kind of argue that we should replace her with Deborah Sampson. Uh, not everybody knows a lot about her. Uh, I find her extremely interesting. She's actually going to be a big part of my final project in here. Uh, she was born in Massachusetts in 1760, uh, born into a family that was struggling financially. She was one of seven children, and when she was about five years old, her father went away on a sea voyage and just never came home. Her mother didn't have a choice. She had to separate her kids into different homes. There were seven of them. And at the age of 10, this was about five years later, Deborah was actually hired out as an indentured servant. And she worked with the Deacon Benjamin Thomas family. Now it was a very large family. Uh, I shouldn't say work with, work for, uh, until she was 18. At the age of 18, when her indenture was paid off, she was self-educated, so she went and worked as a teacher and a weaver for a while. In 1782, the Revolutionary War was raging on when Samson decided that she wanted to join the cause. She dressed herself in men's clothing and she enlisted herself as Robert Shirtliff. She joined the 4th Massachusetts Regiment and she was assigned to Captain George Webb's Company of Light Infantry. Now she had a very dangerous role in the war. She was tasked with scouting neutral territories to assess British buildup of men and materials in Manhattan. George Washington was actually thinking about attacking this area. Uh, she actually helped lead her troops into battle more than once. Uh, in 1782, her and two sergeants led 30 infantrymen um, on an expedition that ended up in hand-to-hand -hand combat with some Tories. Uh, she also led a raid on a Tories house that resulted in the capture of 15 men. At the siege of Yorktown, she helped dig trenches. Uh, she helped storm the uh, uh, the, the British during a uh, heavy cannon fire. Uh, she actually had gotten injured as well. Uh, when she was injured, she actually had a close call with being caught as a woman. Um, she got a gash on her forehead from a sword and she got shot in the leg uh, with a pistol. And she actually took the ball out herself in her leg to avoid being detected. It wasn't until she had been in service for about a year and a half that she had sustained some, um, she, she caught, uh, a, she fell ill, let's put it that way, when an epidemic was coming through when she was in Philadelphia and she actually passed out, lost consciousness, and that's when they discovered that she was a female. So she fought for a long time before anyone discovered this. Uh, she was discharged from the army. She met her future husband, Benjamin Gannett, and they were married. After her death, he went, well, Deborah Sampson, I should say first, got a pension for fighting the army. And upon her death, uh, her husband went and petitioned for soldier, spouse of a soldier pay. Uh, he actually was able to get that. And she was noted uh, by Congress that she was the only female uh, hero and who fought with courage during the Civil War. So she was a remarkable lady and her husband actually got that pay that he was looking for. I would argue if we're going to replace any um, Betsy Ross with anyone, it should be Deborah, who was unafraid to fight for her patriotic duty and what she believed in despite the consequences and the fear of, you know, marching into battle with a group of men. So I hope you enjoyed this. Can't wait to hear what you guys had to say and uh, good luck.